nirvana is a phenomenon beyond both time and space. In Pali, Buddha nirvana is referred to as uh, Akalika by the Buddha. Akalika means timeless, that means beyond time. And it also is referred to as Anantang. Anantang means boundless, that means beyond space. No space boundaries, no time by boundaries. Uh, that also described this fact, this uh, aspect of the phenomenon, are described as a pasika. A pasika means literally means can be seen here. Here is not a bounded space. It is only a point of space. It is only a point without the boundary of any particular space, anywhere can be here. Therefore, Nirvana can be anywhere that we can call here. And also it is related to another uh, aspect that is called Sanditiko, can be seen now. That there is the literal meaning of the word Sanditiko. Now means there is no flow of time. There is no time duration in the point. It is only a point in the stream of time. It's not a moving point. Like the A, it is also here means not a moving point with boundaries. Therefore, Nirvana is beyond time and space means Nirvana is here and now. Uh, boundless Nirvana, thus we can be experienced here and now, but to say experience also not logical because in Nirvana there is no experience. There is Nirvana, Atti Nibbuti, as Reverend Buddha Gau says, no Nibbuto, there is no one who has enlightened and who has realized Nirvana. It's called Anatta, there is no person, there is no self in Nirvana. It's the selflessness, Anatta, and Sunyata means there is no content in the Nirvana. Sunyata means no content, nothing in Nirvana, emptiness. And this emptiness is boundless emptiness and it was a timeless emptiness. Therefore, Nirvana is called Sanantana Dhamma. Timeless Dharma existing all the time. That is why it is said that Nirvana is Ajata, it is not born. Birth is on a point of time. It is called Abhuta. Buddha means happened. Happening is in a point of time and in a duration of time. Akatam. Akata means not done. Asankata, not composed. This is how the Nibbana is uh, described in the Tatya Nibbana Sutta. Ajatam, Abhutam, Akatam, Asankata. Therefore, it is another factor described there is it is free from all the four physical elements uh, in Buddhism. They are really not things but activities. It is Patavi, Apo, Tejo, Vayu are the four elements. You free from the physical elements called Patavi, Apo, Tejo, Vayu according to the Kevada Sutta in the Diganikaya. Therefore, non-physical means it is not a substance. Nirvana is not a substance. Time and space are also not substances, although they are related to substances. 
Nirvana is not a substance, no, it is related to any substance. It is not the product of any substance. But time and space, according to scientists, are the product of the particular universe. Before the Big Bang, there was no time and space in the universe, in the black hole, according to scientists. And after the Big Bang, after the Big Crunch again, the universe is expanding and contracting in the, during the duration of a time and within space. The scientist theory is both space and time are temporary and a product of the Big Bang up to the Big Crunch. Uh, nirvana is not away from our universe, but we can't say it is everywhere in the universe. It has been everywhere in the universe. It is beyond time and space. In uh, the book called A Brief History of Time from the Big Bang to the Black Hole by the Professor Stephen Hawkins, published in 1989 shows that time is related to the uh, physical entities, different planets, different worlds. That means time is the relative factor. Different uh, planets have different duration of time, even the space, the space again to scientists not flat as is supposed to be it. It is curved. In our earth, the space is curved. It, and in bigger this uh, planet like uh, Jupiter, uh, it's a big, bigger curve. The smaller planet, it's a smaller curve like Mercury, uh, it's a smaller curve. Time and space are really mental phenomena. Time is made of mind. It's, it, we can uh, uh, say time is a notion, so the space is a no notion. How our mind conceives things. My mind conceives things during the duration, within the duration of a time and within a space. We, we see and we experience things and beings within the time dimension and the space dimension. Space dimension according to scientists are of uh, three types. There is a uh, motion from one side to another side, for example, from left to right or right to left. That is, the space we consider horizontal. Then there is the vertical space, up and down, movement from up to down or down to up, movement can. Uh, space means uh, the area for movement, from left to right, from right to right, there can be movement. There can be movement from bottom to top and from top to bottom. And there can be movement backward or forward. Therefore, space is measured by movements, measured by movements. In uh, Nirvana, According to the Buddha's description in the Kevada Sutta, you see, Nirvana described as Vijnana, there is the knowingness, Vijnana. Knowingness, but there is nobody, no knower. There is nobody who knows, but there is the knowing nature. Anidasana, 
No example can be given. We can't understand that dimension in nirvana within this dimension in which we live. It is not related to our dimension. That is why the Buddha said that knowing nature of nirvana without a knower cannot be ex expressed by an example, cannot be shown by an example. Vijnanam anidasana. Did the statement of the Buddha that comes at the end of the Kevada Sutra in the Dignikaya, the first volume, uh, page 538. Anidasana anantam, spaceless, no space, boundless. Sabbato pabam. Pabam really means uh, light, full of light, full of radiance, illuminated, luminous. But here yeah, it is a poetic expression. Everything can be seen, nothing is hidden. It shows it is free from the moha, ignorance. Therefore, there is awareness, vijnanam, anidasanam, free from all ignorances called moha. Anidasanam means prajna, the wisdom. The eye of wisdom is there, but there is no wise one there, no person, no self in the nirvana. And it describes Nirvana as Etta Apocha Patavi Tejo Vayo Nagadati. They are four physical elements. In Buddhist science, ele physical elements are not things but activities. Patavi means Yan Tadda Lakan and Tam Patavi, things get pressed together. In our, maybe the chair, maybe the wall, maybe the stone, maybe the earth, particles are pressed to each other. And through th things are pressed to the earth by the gravity. That activity of pressing towards some center is called Patavi. Apo means when two things are up, yang abandana lakkan, yang abandana lakkan and tang apo. That is how it is described in the Buddhist literature. When two things are pressed together to, to each other, uh, it, they generate a heat, electrical heat, tejo. Scientifically, it happens when two elements, with every element, consists of atoms, electrons, any part, even two particles, any solid objects is made of atoms. They are the buildings of this universe and, and the matter in this world. When two material elements are pressed to each other, the electrons moving around the nucleus of atoms get combined with each other and produce electrical charge that is called Tejo. Patavi, Apo, Apo is the binding nature, they are bound together and produce Tejo. And where there is uh, electricity, there is magnetism, negative and positive. That is called Vayo, it is the movement. Positive nature attracts, negative nature repels. Pressing is an activity, a movement, and that is repulsion is a movement, attraction is a movement. Therefore, they are called vayo with regard to the activity of attraction and repulsion. And these four physical elements, that is patavi, apo, tejo, vayo, are not there in the universe means, according to the description given by the Buddha in the Kevara Sutra of the Ignikaya, it is a non-physical phenomenon, non-physical phenomenon. There is no physical element in the Nirvana. There is no space in the Nirvana Anantam. There is no time in the Nirvana Akalika. 
इत्ते दीगांचे रस्तांचे अनु तुलांग सुबासुबा देर आर नो ड्यूएलिटीज इन निर्वाण है बिकॉज़ देर आर नो एलिमेंट्स देर आर नो फिजिकल एलिमेंट्स इन निर्वाण है इत्ते जीगान रस्तां वी कैन सी दैट समथिंग इज दीगम इज लॉन्ग रस्ता मीन शॉर्ट विल नो बीइंग नो थिंग्स दैट वी कैन से दिस समथिंग लॉन्ग दिस इज समथिंग शॉर्ट अनुम तुलां देर आर नो थिंग्स टू से दिस स्मॉल नो बिग दैट बी देर आर नो कंपैरिजन इन निर्वाण देर आर देर आर नो थिंग्स ऑपोजिट थिंग्स नो ड्यूएलिटीज इन निर्वाण इट शो निर्वाण इज नॉन ड्यूएलिटी इत नामांच रूपांच असेसंग परुज्यति नाम रूप में से बीइंग द फॉर्म एंड द माइंड द बॉडी एंड द माइंड ऑफ अ पर्सन इज नॉट देयर इन द निर्वाण देयर इज आई द बुद्ध गोस रेवरेंड बुद्ध गोस सेस अति निबुति न निबुतो देयर इज नो वन हु इज एनलाइटन नोबडी इज रिबोर्न इन निर्वाण With the form and mind, there is no mind. Here, the mind refers to not the knowing nature, because knowing nature, according to the first sentence in this Buddha statement, Vijnana, there is the knowing nature, but there is nobody who knows. Itta namaancha rupaancha. Nama means the mind, the mental factor. Rupa means the physical factor. There are no mental factors, no physical factors. In fact, our mental factors are the products of our mental uh, physical factors. Our thinking is the product of the energy supplied by the body, supplied by the blood, supplied by the oxygen that is carried by the blood to the brain and to the heart. And they supply the energy, the fuel for thinking. There is no thinking in nirvana. That is what uh, is meant by saying uh, there is no mind means no thinking. Vijnana se nirode ne tetang purujyati. That vijnana refers to the relinking consciousness. There is no rebirth in nirvana. Nobody is reborn in Nirvana. Nirvana attainment in the Nirvana of not getting born in Nirvana, ending all the rebirth. There is death in this world, and after death there is no birth in Nirvana. Nothing is born in Nirvana. Therefore, Vijnana is Nirodena, ending of the Vijnana. That is the stream of consciousness that came from time immemorial, from birth to birth, giving one life and after that another life, after that another life, and so on. And the underlying factor of rebirth is patisandhi vinyana. The vinyana sroota means the stream of consciousness. There is no stream of consciousness creating rebirth in nirvana. This means nirvana cannot be described in our worldly terms. Therefore, Buddha has to describe nirvana only in negative terms. But he emphasizes there is a phenomenon called nirvana. Without nirvana, there cannot be a Phenomena of the physical world, the universe world. In our normal world, the physical world, things are born, jatam. Then bhutam, things happen. There are events in nirvana. There are births in nirvana. There are bhutam events in nirvana. Katang in nirvana. There are things done in uh, not in nirvana. In our physical world, there are things. That are born. There are events that happens. Katang. There are activities that are done. Asang katang. There are compulsion. 
out of things that are available, things can be composed to give a new form, to generate a new form. That is how the Buddha described Nirvana in the Tatya Nibbana Sutta of Kuddha Kanikaya, that is in page 292, Tatya Nibbana Sutta, Kuddha Kanikaya, page 292. Atti Bhikkave Ajata. He described, uh, he, see, he tells the bhikkhus, his disciple, his disciple, there is a phenomena that is not born. Abhutang, that does not happen. Akatang, that is not done. Asankatang, that is not composed. Novetam bhikkave abhisa, if there is no something unborn, ajatan, abhutan, that has not happened, akatan, not done, asankatan, not composed, naidan, jatasa, buttave, katasa. Without that background, without that state, they are can't, we can say that things are born. Things are born because out of nothing. Things are born, there is no birth, there is nothingness, then things get born, things happen. They get manifested by birth. Things get manifested by birth, things get manifested by events, that is katasya, bhutasya, katasya, sankatasya, things uh, manifested by uh, doings, and sankatasya, by composing. There is, these things happen out of nothing, that nothingness of Nirvana. Therefore, nir, Nirvana and the samsara, the physical existence, are two different entities. But they are not related to each other uh, by way of supplying the power or assistance for the other things to get manifested. That it means it is not a conditional response. Nirvana is not a conditional response of any physical activity. It is not a response. It is not a result of a physical activity. And physical activities are not the result of Nirvana. They are two independent phenomena. Nirvana is an independent phenomena. Sansara, the existence, is an independent phenomena, not related to each other. But at the end of Sansara, there is Nirvana. Extinction of the Sansara is called Nirvana. Therefore, Without the things that are born, that happens, that, that are done, and that are composed, we can refer to Nirvana as the quite opposite of it. We refer to Nirvana as the opposite of things that are available. That means Buddha referred to Nirvana in negative terms. These things are not in the Nirvana. What are the things that are not available in the Nirvana? Jata, what are born, are not in the Nirvana. Abhuta, what happens, are not in the Nirvana. Akata, what is done, is not in Nirvana. Asankata, what is composed, is not in the Nirvana. Therefore, these are only words. But to actual reality, one has to realize. But one factor with regard to Nirvana is, Nirvana is Atakkavacharan. According to this word, Atakkavacharan means, it is not an object of the mind. It is not a thought. Nirvana is not a thought. We can't think of Nirvana as a real entity. Whatever we think are only illusions. Our ideas are illusion. Nirvana is not an illusion, that's what I say. The things that we experience in this world are all illusion, that is why called sunyata, sunyata. 
or there may be realities that we experience, but they are not actual realities. Our eyes can reflect the picture of somebody or somebody into our brain and the brain can recognize it. When the light reflected from an object touches the eye, the eye gets its reflection in its retina as a picture and that picture according to science is transferred through nerves into our brain. That section of the brain where they are reflected are at the small brain at the back of our head. When they are sent electrically, they are called electrical signals, sent from the retina, the eye, or onto the brain, they are called signals, and signals are called in Pali term sanya. The electrical signals are called Vedana, they, Vedana means electricity. The electricity that carries those signals are called Vedana. And the stimulation that causes the electricity uh, is called uh, Rupa. Rupa means Rupatitko Bhikkave Rupa. It is the stimulation of the sense or, of a sense organs that produce electricity, electrical heat called Vedana that transmits a signal to the brain to be recognized. Once the picture that reflected its uh, radiation or we can reflection from a particular object comes in touch with the eye, the eye sends the signal, there is this object in front of my mind, but I does not say, I, can't, I cannot recognize. It is only the brain cell that can recognize. Recognition is called sanya. The memories that help to recognize the object that you see. We see object and we recognize it as a tree. We see an object and we recognize it as a building. We recognize something as a man or a woman. And those recognitions are possible with the help of our past memories retained and preserved and saved in our brain cells. We, that they are called memories. Without past memories, we cannot recognize, recognize any object of any sense organ. When you hear somebody's voice, the voice alone will help us to recognize the particular person if that person is very familiar to us. Even a glimpse of a person is a sufficient for us. Sometimes in the dark we may not see a person, but we can see his movement sometimes. That very movement, how he walks, how he moves, his height, his physical status, gives us a clue to recognize who that particular person is. And all such regions are possible by the memories retain our brain. And those memories get opened up, retrieved, when there is electrical signal from a particular sense organ and we recognize the object that led to the sending of electrical signals from the particular sense organ. Then what happens after that when the previous pictures are retrieved, opened up, not only the picture, but feeling associated with the feeling get cropped up. Because there is an interconnection between our heart and the brain, even according to science and even according to the experience of those who do deep meditation. Feelings are in the heart. Vedana is are affecting heart in the inner unenlightened. When there is sensation, we feel the sensation as pleasant, unpleasant or neutral. Sukha Vedana, Dukkha Vedana, Adukkha Masukha Vedana. Feelings are, get, feelings get, then feelings lead to thinking. 
when a certain recognition leads to certain pleasantness in the mind, then mind wants to continue it. Get, mind gets attached to it. Attachment is a thought process. I, I like to have it. Greed is a uh, thought process. I want to have it. I want to get it. I want to continue it. Uh, possession. I want to possess it. Oh, I want to get rid of it. Those are unpleasant things. We want to get rid of things. Then we start thinking. They are called sankara. And all our thinking cause a force, electromagnetic force called vijnana, cable of giving us a rebirth after the death of the present life. And that instance, or that way of giving birth to another, uh, giving birth after death is called patisandhi vijnana, the relinking consciousness. That electromagnetic power is transmitted from our brain, from our head, onto another womb, another state of rebirth. It may be as a devil, it may be as a god or deity or angel or Brahma or somebody or animal, we can be reborn according to our, the mentality. But Nirvana is beyond rebirth. That is the most important thing. Beyond rebirth means, according to uh, that I have explained, there is na, na, it says, Etta namanta rupancha asesam uparijyati. Without remaining anything, both name and form vanishes altogether. It is emptiness. There is no rebirth. Is. There is rebirth in this particular world, but not a rebirth in the Nirvana. Nirvana is attaining, is attaining the extinction of rebirth. Not to be born again, because the enlightened one sees it is the birth that leads to jati, jara, vyadi, marana. Jati means the birth leads to old age, decay, vyadi, sickness, and death. It leads to all suffering. To escape suffering, we had to escape from body and mind. Here the mind means not the knowing nature, but the thinking nature of the mind. The thinking nature is referred to as Pancha Upadana Kanda. That is what Buddha said that is his uh, first sermon, Dhamma Chakka Pavatana Sutta, Sankirtena Pancha Upadana Kanda Vidukha. Suffering means nothing but our process of thinking. We may think of something pleasant. Ultimately, it leads to suffering because nothing pleasant can remain forever. And we can never be attached to the same thing pleasant. Sometimes we get tired of things pleasant. When we are hungry, food is very pleasant to us. When our hunger is fully satisfied, we don't want any more food. Anything is like that. We may be interested in playing, but when, when we are, once we are tired, we get no interest in playing again, doing exercise. There is a time duration in which things can be enjoyed. After that, we get tired of things that can be enjoyed, and that leads to suffering. Therefore, in Buddhism, both present and unpleasant experiences are suffering. Nirvana is complete freedom of suffering. It is complete freedom of suffering because it is beyond the mind, there is no mind there. And there is no body, there is no space. No space is required in Nirvana because there are no bodies in Nirvana. It is the body that requires the space of the three dimensions, length, breadth and height. That dimensions are not available in Nirvana. It is free from all the three dimensions of the world and also the time dimension introduced by Albert Einstein. Therefore, we can say Nirvana is beyond both time and space. And we have 
being born into time and space and we have been continuing in time and space and ending of our self, ending of our body, ending of our mind means complete freedom from time and space. Therefore Nirvana is the freedom from time and space, freedom from the universe. Time and space according to science is in the universe. It is related to the universe. Nirvana is not related to the Nirvana. Universe has nothing to do with the Nirvana. But we cannot express Anidasana, we cannot express what that real state is. One has to realize it, as I call Pachatabam Veditabo Vinyoiti. Only the sensitive can realize what the real Nirvana is. And we have, all have the sensitivity, the capacity hidden in us. One day to realize Nirvana and escape from both space and time into the nothingness, but into the supreme bliss of nothingness in Nirvana. <laughs>